continuing here. So, friends, listen, like I was saying, remember to savor the moments because at the end of the day, that's all we really have. Eternity is comprised of but a series of interconnecting, seamless moments. And if, so, if for some reason we can't savor it because something's bugging us, other than what's organic, okay, remember, I just started listening to some of that stuff. There's not much we could do except pray to God for answers, okay? And that's why it's important to have ancient knowledge, okay? Because, look, I got nothing. If somebody wants to attack my my faith, my my trust, my belief that there's a creator God Almighty that's all-loving and all-powerful, omnipotent, okay, then I got no way to defend that God doing this the evil things in this world, and okay, and allowing them to happen. Okay, that's the organic stuff. Like, why would you put thorns on roses? They don't stop animals from eating them. They don't stop goats and deer. They don't stop insects from, and diseases. So it doesn't do anything. The, the thorns have no purpose. And to suggest that the thorns do have a purpose and to not believe in God is to believe that plants have brains, right? Because, you know, that's all, how do you get defenses unless you got a brain? I mean, the defenses were given right but it's not a defense it's just a curse it's like it's written i mean it, women's childbearing pains became more difficult and you say well no it's just that babies heads are big and it's hard for the women to push them out and uh, and, and and it just has to be that way does it look at other animals they're not going through that it's not like that at all it's, i mean for women it, 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 it's horrific i mean a lot of women die in childbearing i mean i'm sure it happens in the animal kingdom too but it, god could have made that child the baby come the size of a mouse that's not going to hurt any woman right so what the kangaroos do that right the itty bitty tiny things come out they're big creatures some of them big as humans maybe bigger i don't know but I'm just saying, that's the only answer I have. And the thorns on the road, it all came from the original sin, the fall of man, and the subsequent curse that befell the earth. We basically, humans, screwed it up. Not us personally, maybe, but our ancestors did. We've got to be, take the responsibility. It's in our genes. We can't run from it. It's just accepting the fact. So we are responsible. Our ancestors were, and by extension, we become responsible for screwing it up for all the other creatures on earth. We screwed it up. That's why they're all afraid of us. I mean, you, you know, the hunting and all this. Well, are they smart? I mean, do they know? What's the instinct? They know there's something wrong with that species. There's something weird going on. They, they don't trust us, right? It's not, you know, to domesticate an animal takes some time. You're going to trust them. And a lot of time they just trick them. Like, look at the cattle that we raise and just lead them to slaughter. No problem. But, you know, friends, listen, we're in a lot of trouble because we're way, way, way down this demonic rabbit hole toward hell, the way I like to put it. Okay, we're, we're, we're eyeball high in this, this, this sewer pit, okay, of madness, okay? And they want you to believe it, keep trusting it. I'm telling you, jump ship. At least in your heart and mind, you can get off this, this mad, mad, mad merry-go-round. Okay, because that's all it is, because the people running the show are insane. They're mad, and so that's all they have to offer us is madness. Okay, and, and it affects us in our local communities, and we got to start blaming each other. we got to point the finger at the causers of the problems, <laughs> the policymakers at the top, this national debt. I mean, you think that's a joke? You, you think that's cute that they're not talking about that in the mainstream media and the implications thereof, the effect that's having on people's lives? This continual debasement of our money and telling people it's a good thing because it it's housing values N and not educating the people that this is a huge contributor to homelessness. Yeah, we're, it, we're spending $50 billion a year subsidizing it and calling the, these are bad poor people. They're immoral, right? To be poor is immoral, basically. That are needy. They, they couldn't afford to support their own children. So now they need help paying their rent. So they go to the, the, the state teat. And, and they get the welfare, the, the Section 8 housing through HUD and the housing, local housing authorities it, because these poor, dumb people, miserable, lazy people uh, that shouldn't have children, uh, they, they're needy. And yet 
all this money, this $50 billion we're spending every year goes in the pockets of fat cats. And all it serves to do is exacerbate the problem. And then we're going to call that socialism? Man, if that's socialism, run, don't walk away from it. I mean, that that's evil. You, you understand that this is not by accident. This is not through incompetence. Okay, in in their wet dreams, can they claim that at the very top, uppermost echelons? No way. No way. No way, man. This is through careful, evil genius, deliberation, collusion of various special interest groups, okay, who have a common interest, and that interest is contrary to the interests of the American people at large. That's it. I mean, if we've got any form of capitalism that that's not being played fair, then it's going to create this problem. A rising tide of prosperity that lifts some ships to the highest heavens while, while it submerges others, that's what we've got. That's what we've got. And we're going to call that capitalism? Then, yeah, what am I? Am I a socialist? You heard how I slammed socialism. Am I a capitalist? I'm an egalitarian, for God's sake. I'm a logical, thinking human being that just wants problems fixed that wants things to get better not for some selective people in society but for everybody ever so gradually it doesn't matter but I want evidence I want to see it and I'm not and we're in trouble how are they going to turn this ship around how is this worm going to turn when they're doing everything they can to prevent it from turning but the people aren't going to take this. How many people are going to accept being dirt poor, scrambling for welfare, and if you're rejected there, living out on the streets under the bridges? How many Americans are going to tolerate that crap before they have a revolt? That's what they don't. They, they, they don't want to. They don't want to upset the apple cart. These evil doers, they see that the writing on the wall. That's why they're sending people all this money. <coughs> they know. They see. Man, the people are reaching their wits. They're going to figure this thing out, that we've caused this on purpose. This scenario, this, 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 this trek, this marathon, this sprint toward a third world status in America. We did it on purpose, and we want to keep doing it. But they know they're getting scared. They know they can't do it forever. So tell me how traumatic it's going to be if we start seeing rents going down. Property values, values going down. And people are going to be miserable all around you. All you, all you fairness seekers, all you people that want sound economic policy, you're causing deflation. You're bad people. What are you, communists? Socialists, anti-capitalists, anti-un-Americanists. Well, oh, I can see it now. They'd be crying in their soup. If, if people were able to wriggle out from under the thumb of their landlords, and if they find out it's cheaper to buy my own place, my housing dollars are going up. People don't care what happens once they buy it. Yeah, the housing values go down. So what? I bought a house. Should go down. It's old. It's like a car. It's a used car. It depreciates. That's what's supposed to happen. Let you do some improvements. God, we're so screwed up, man. It's a fallen nation. I mean, we've got some good virtues, values, and precepts in America, but I'll tell you what, they're shot to crap, man. We're on our freaking knees where we need to be. We need to think long and hard about the stuff I'm telling you, my friends. You better start caring about the least of men out there. You want God's hand of protection back on this country? You want to try to try to salvage what's left of the American way of life, our standard of living, this idea that we're a beacon of freedom around the world? Man, oh man, you better do something. You're taking care of criminals? You're paying 100000 a year sometimes to keep one person in jail for one year? Because they were driven to crime through economic despair, desperation. And you're going to accept this. You're going to tolerate this. You're going to be silent about this. And then stand before you. It might be today. If this is your last day on earth, then it's your day of reckoning.
You give account for your BS, your belief system. Is that what you want? So you see, I'm everybody's friend. I'm, I'm the best friend to the evildoers because they can get the same reward, but they got to stop being evil. That's it. I mean, it's just about stop being evil, man. Okay, you got to realize that the things that are highly valued among men are, are often, okay, despicable or despised by God. Do you understand? They're an abomination. And namely, that's money because of the effect it has on the hearts and minds of people. And yes, like everybody else, I believe I'm a money lover. And God understands. Of course I am. That's everything to all of us. That's our very security. That's a roof over your freaking head. That's food on your freaking table. That, that's meeting your energy needs. So yeah, you need money. Absolutely, that's survival. Continue to exist. I need money. God gets it. I get it. But we got to render it less and less relevant. We got to allow a rising tide of prosperity that lifts all boats. That's true capitalism. That's supply and demand capitalism, my friends. That's just scales. That's playing a game fair. Just scales. You know, you don't want them rigged, right? But they're rigged, highly rigged. And we've been lied to, tricked, and told we got to be divided and we got to be deluded and we got to be deceived and we got to just go along with the program of this bad religion. That shoved down our throats from birth. And I'm telling you, no. Go the opposite direction. Listen to God. And what does he tell you? How to think. You want your belief systems to be correct? Check in every day. The counselor, the spirit of truth is there for all of us. Equal access. We have an umbilical cord to God through this Holy Spirit of truth. It's there for all of us. It's called the comforter, the encourager. Whatever good thing you want to call it, it's there for you. But this prayer that we have, we've got to... You know, take it very seriously. Our whole lives should be like a prayer. And just be grateful for all the things that God has given us every day and all the little things. that we, If we don't give thanks for all the little things in life that we're blessed with, then we're missing blessings. They're missed blessings. And you got in order to savor the moment, it's just like savoring a good meal. Okay, savoring your lovemaking. Okay, whatever it is, right? Then you want to, um, you know, you got to slow down. You, you got to take it easy. Take your time and enjoy the moments because that's really all we have is the moments. That's it. Forevermore. So we got what's bugging us. We got to get to the bottom of what's bugging us so that we can do that thing and have some peace of mind. And we got to figure out for ourselves, well, we're, how are the demons getting in me? It's like I'm starting to learn. I'm not a young guy anymore, and it's taken me a long time, and I've had to learn by the school of hard knocks, experience, and all that crap that I just want peace of mind. When I'm driving my car, I can lose my peace of mind, okay? And it's like these demons are out there hopping around. It's a gladiatorial sport for some people out there on the highway. And it's like, you know what? I can get into their mindset. I can let those demons hop into me, or I can say, God, you know what, let me be who I want to be, okay? Let me drive the way I want to drive so I retain my peace of mind. And then by extension, I want to live my life in like fashion. I don't want any enemies. I only want friends, okay? Life's hard enough. Who the hell needs enemies out there? I want to be everybody's friend, and I have a right to do that if that's what I choose to be. I choose not to be a threat to anybody, and if they choose to perceive me as a threat, that's their prerogative. That's their exclusive right, as it is mine to say, you're, uh, you're mistaken, though. Like Christ, he was nobody's enemy. He was everybody's friend. He, he, he was on the side of the evildoers, but you've got to repent or perish, because where you're going from here, man, you're not going to make it. You're not going to be found worthy and deserving of inheriting a better world, and that's what I want to be found worthy and deserving of inheriting. I'm willing to have it God's way. And then ask, be honest, and ask, how is it? How will it be? Well, there cannot be any form of money because see how easily it corrupts the hearts and minds of men. They love money more than they love relationship with God or their fellow human beings. Okay, they like that advantage, that one up. And often in this world, they put them on a pedestal as exalted as, you know, wow, you've, you've arrived, you're famous and, and you, you know, rich and, you know, wow, you're somebody and, and you deserve it and you get all the accolades and all that crap and people's egos and they feed off that. It's like, what the hell is the ego? 
It, 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 it's perishing. It, it's nothing. It's nothing. You're going to stand before God with your ego? And how, you, what, who the hell are you? The righteousness of men is, are filthy rags to God. No, my friends. I mean, we should have deep respect for each other because, I mean, and sensitivity and, and empathy and compassion and mercy and understanding and just comfort. We got to try to emulate God and, 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 and be friends to all humanity. We've got to really love and care. To care, to love, we've got to care. Caring 